Welcome to a discussion today of the potential for replacing all the existing coal-fired plants immediately with new coal-fired Delta supercritical plants here in the United States. The, it may seem counterintuitive, but this would actually allow us to reduce CO2 very quickly by as much as 30 percent. And the key to all this is the fact that it could all be justified on the 25-year life of these new plants. Therefore, whether you're an avid environmentalist or a coal advocate, either way, at the end of 25 years, it's a new ball game. You can replace them all, all the plants with new coal plants again for another 25 years, or you can go to wind or solar. But the point is that we should be focusing on the next 25 years and not on the longer range picture. And when you do that, it, you see very uh, easily that the cost of electricity won't go up with the supercritical plants because they use 30% less coal. And that means 30% uh, less CO2. And it means uh, eliminating a lot of your other pollutants that otherwise are very expensive to remove from old plants. But when you build a new supercritical, first of all, you start with a an air pollution control system 30% smaller, and with a big greenfield plant uh, opportunity, uh, you don't have to shoehorn a lot of expensive equipment into a, a space that wasn't designed for it initially. So if you look at the at at this from a, uh, a statistical basis, what we would be doing essentially is on a world basis, and and I was talking here for really for the United States, but it really should be done on a world basis. And if you look at it on a, a world basis, you've got uh, 1,900 uh, gigawatts of coal being produced now. Uh, this would rise to 2,600 in 2030, and then could even drop off to 1,300 in 2050, and then to zero in 2070. You know, if you if you're uh, uh, believe that solar and wind and these other things can take over then. If they can't, then uh, build another generation for another 25 years of coal plants. But the key here is this 1,200 uh, gigawatts of plants that would be replaced uh, during this period, and there would be about 300 uh, gigawatts here in the United States and old plants elsewhere in the world, China and a number of other other places. This, what, what this would result in, and we can just see it graphically here, is the, um, in terms of, of gigawatts of, in place and emissions, that uh, first of all, in terms of gigawatts, they would go up slightly to 2030, and this is a lot of the emplacements in there, and then uh, would go down to, uh, as much as zero if you wanted to replace all the coal plants by 2070. But the CO2 uh, uh, generation would only go up, despite the increase, would only go up slightly. Uh, and then uh, because you're operating all these super critical plants in the 2030 uh, range, the uh, CO2 is going down. So the bottom line is that uh, CO2 and all the other pollutants are effectively eliminated. And the most important thing here is that uh, you have low-cost electricity and low emissions of mercury, NOx, SOx, and, and all these others. Now, we are seeing some problems with the nuclear in terms of safety. We're seeing that the methane emissions uh, associated with shale gas and with natural gas may be higher than people thought they were. So it would seem to be a no-brainer here to provide this huge stimulus, stimulus for the world economy of building all these new coal plants that essentially don't add to the debt. The cost of electricity doesn't go up, so the, there's a return on this investment for the investors so that are in investing the trillion-plus dollars that's needed to do all this. But it is a huge st stimulus for the, the country and the other intriguing factor is with all this less coal being burned to produce the same amount of electricity, 
the remaining coal can be directly liquefied, and McElbain has been conducting webinars that show that that can be done uh, for the equivalent of about $50 a barrel of gasoline. So essentially the U.S. and other countries, China's got a program going on right now with the Headwaters technology where they are making gasoline from coal at the equivalent of about $50 a barrel. So the coal that we're saving could be uh, utilized to make gasoline. It, uh, it It's all described in the McIlvain uh, uh, database and market report, which is the nuclear and fossil generation. So we track coal, oil, and nuclear and all the ramifications thereof. And you can see here on our website that you can reach uh, uh, this particular brochure at that location uh, on the McIlvain website and learn more about the fossil and nuclear power generation world analysis and forecast. Thanks for spending the few minutes on this subject with us, and bye for now.